Welcome to Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for choosing to join in today's episode. In today's episode, we've got Carol back. She's been a model on the channel before and she hasn't had a hair colour all summer. So a few things have happened. Obviously, her regrowth has come through. It's looking very dark and also uh, kind of it's fading out nicely. It's not too um, transitional, a big hard demarcation of hair because the technique that we used last time kept it soft. So we're going to keep it in that vein. We're going to show you a slightly different technique on how to deal with this uh, in a nice, succinct, um, fast way, you know, because I think it's nice to have techniques in the bag that take hours. It's also nice to have techniques in the bag that yeah, get the job done fairly quickly too. Um, as we can see, there's quite a lot of lightness through the ends here. Carol likes to be nice and light, so uh, we're not going to be um, darkening any of these ends. We're really just going to be matching up this root area to more what's going on through these ends here as well. Um, we were just discussing the kind of texture of hair and, and the way that it changes as time goes on. And Carol was saying that hair feels quite coarse and even like the hair that's coming out of her head feels coarser than it used to be. Um, and it's just very thick hair in general. And of course, the disposition of hair that's thick and, um, you know, coarse, it's, it's just going to get more so. But that can also cause problems with lifting. It can make it more difficult to lift the hair. So that's something we're going to have to factor in. So whenever you have hair that's uh, coarse and maybe more difficult to lift, it's always a good idea to bump your peroxide when the hair can be thick and coarse like this. So normally I would use 20 volume on this level. We're about level seven, um, but I'm going to bump it up to 30 um, and we're going to work with a, a sectioning pattern that covers the most amount of hair in the shortest amount of time because there is quite a lot of dark in there now. And uh, we want to really boost the blonde in there, but we also want to keep it soft. So I'm going to show you how to go through the technique. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you do, then please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to take your life of hair education one step further, then click the description down below. and You can join the Life of Hair Academy where there's lots of exclusive content for you guys to level up your hairdressing skills. I'll see you in the next one. So we're starting in the back here and we've taken a diagonal section just above the occipital bone that runs through the back here. This is the occipital bone. And then this is the parietal ridge and they connect at this point. So we've taken the section through the middle of there and then we're going to take a section just above that point. So we've got a kind of fingers width in between each of the sections. And then what we're going to do is take a very, very fine um, slice of hair that is, you know, almost transparent paper, fine slice of hair. Uh, and you've got to make sure it is as thin as you can make it really. In this particular instance, I like using slices when you're trying to cover a lot of hair. The thing about this particular technique or this, you know, what we're doing here is that we want a decent amount of impact, but we also don't want to create an enormous amount of um, maintenance, um, you know, in terms of having to have it colored in a few weeks time. So we want it to be soft still, but we want to get that maximum coverage. So we're using diagonals through this crown area because sometimes on people, the crown area splits, the wind blows, you know, it sort of opens up. So we're using a diagonal to create maximum softness uh, within this area on the head. So we're gonna work our way through the technique and we're just gonna stick in this diagonal um, backwards way of applying the foils, which keeps everything really, really nice and soft in this crown area. And then when we work through the front area, we're going to shift it a little bit. We're going to change the way that we apply the foils. And I'll obviously show you that in just a second. Um, but I'll rejoin you once I get to this kind of highest point, because this is where people get confused with the transition from front to back, because I've simply just separated um, the hair down. I just turn uh, Carol around a minute. I've just separated from the highest point of the head to the back of the ear. And I repeated that process on the opposite side. Um, and then I've got this diagonal section that I'm going to work through um, the crown area. So let me just pop a couple of foils in and then I'll join you at that top section. So we are just coming round now and we can see on this side where we divided the hair down to the back of the ear. And we're just going to stick in that diagonal uh, section and take that very fine piece of hair. We're doing exactly the same thing, but we're... We just want to make sure that we stay diagonal as we travel through the hair and um, you know make sure that we kind of stick to the rules of what we started with quite often what we find 
is when people use a diagonal section, they start to pivot, so they end up square here. I mean, if you're deliberately trying to pivot, then great. Diligently staying in that diagonal can be quite difficult, and it's something you actually just have to stay conscious of. As we've worked through this particular technique now, look, we've come to this horizontal line. Now, if we put one in here, it will go horizontal. So we're gonna leave that gap now because we're gonna obviously come back in the opposite direction. We can leave spaces in the hair, you know, positive and negative areas, positive areas being bits that we colored and negative areas being bits that we've left out. Remember that, that it's quite important that we do that in a lot of techniques because otherwise we're going to complete color changes in foil. And actually that's a little bit of a, but I mean it in the nicest possible way. It's a bit of an old fashioned thing to do, is to do a complete color change in foil. Highlights are highlights. If we're doing complete color changes, it's a completely different kettle of fish. We're gonna work with the hair in the parting of which it's gonna be worn. So it's gonna be worn roughly in the area which it is now. And we're gonna work up the sides here to the parting. And uh, we're gonna put in a few more foils than we did previously on the other sections through these side sections, just to make sure that we get kind of enough coverage. But again, we're gonna use exactly the same premise of very, very fine foils um, or hair within the foils and making sure that we obviously saturate the hair really, really well so that we get maximum lift out of it and uh, just getting that product onto the hair really thick. Helps so much when it comes to the lift. It lifts so much faster, so much cleaner. Uh, we don't have to do so much toning work or corrective toning work afterwards we just get that result in a wanna rather than having to sort of mess around. I see so many times where stylists are struggling with their highlights or the, or the lift of a certain technique and they're at the basins and they're just using toners to save the day. And uh, ultimately, you know, if, if you get enough product on the hair and make sure that you really, really, really saturate that product through, you'll end up with kind of levels of lightness that you, were probably aiming for but didn't really get and I find that so often when I'm teaching when I'm out on the road teaching that people just really really don't understand how much product it requires in the packet or on their scalp bleach to get the job done well first time without leaving it on for hours and hours and hours and um, I, I don't know whether you know low and slow technique that's out there you know everybody loves at the moment I, I don't know whether low and slow was bred of undersaturating I'm not really sure but I find that if you just get that product onto the hair nice and thick nice and quickly you do get really really fantastic results within the manufacturers recommended processing time and that for me is a really really important thing that we make sure that we stick to that we stick to the manufacturer's processing guidelines of development times. We're just using these diagonal strokes here just to move the hair around to kind of amplify that saturation. Elevate the section up, smooth out the product. And pubs your uncle. Keep the ends out of the packet, obviously. The ends are already lightened. We don't want to keep lightening these ends. They'll damage the ends more than we want them to be. And then we're just going to work our way up now to the parting. Okay, so we're coming up to the parting now and it's not, you know, rocket science what happens here. We don't change the um, angle of attack. We're still using horizontal sections up to the parting. Uh, the only so kind of main difference then we're going to weave the slice. So a slice is fairly thin and then our weave makes it even softer. Uh, we're going to work with about half centimetre partings in between each of the foils as we work through this parting zone so i would probably say an inch either side of roughly where the hair is going to be parted is a good spot to go um, and again same rules saturate 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 and then i paint right up to the lip of my foil and i get a lot of comments about people saying you know do you not get bleeds and stuff when you paint right up to the lip of the foil no i don't get bleeds because i the way if i secure my foils so i'll show you how i do that in just a second fold it by a third I'm going to fold it by a third again over the uh, lip of the fold. You can see underneath now we've got this big gap and we've got this kind of lip to fold in and that makes a really tight seal to stop the product from escaping from the back of the foil, which is usually where we get our bleeds come from. So again, same premise. We can take that half centimeter section, nice fine slice, little weave, 
just like that. One question that I get asked a lot when we're working horizontally up to a parting, do I put one in the parting? And the answer is yes. Um, because even if you, for example, say, come up the other side and get to the parting, which is I'll show you when we get there on the opposite side, um, you just keep working through because ultimately people don't wear their parting in exactly the same place every single time. It obviously does move around a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, just keep working through. Don't stop before the parting or don't do one underneath the parting, which sometimes I've heard people say, oh, do you put them underneath the parting? I, you know, because that would be okay if the parting was in exactly the same spot every single time, but obviously that's just not realistic. So yeah, just be aware of that idea is not a good idea, you know, because if the client then moves their parting or something happens, then it all can look a bit blocky. Whereas obviously where we switch to having a weaved section, a quite weaved, um, delicate piece of um, hair in the foil as well that's not very thick, then it doesn't matter if it gets moved around left to right, up and down, they change their parting, it will still be cut nice and soft in that section. So that's something to bear in mind if you've got that idea in your head and you wonder how you manage that in this particular way, then that's it. And the other thing that I would also say as well is when you come to the ends of the section here, you can see kind of underneath that section there, it's not very well saturated. So make sure you paint that on nice and thick. So you get that underneath side of that section saturated. We've got the very ends poking out there just so that we don't get any lightness on them. To the top again, and we're coming up to the parting and we're kind of about one inch roughly away from the parting and this is the time when we will now so what we're going to do now is um we're going to determine what's the best kind of position for the foils so we're going to take a section and um yep that looks probably about right and if i take another one like that we'll have a fine slither of hair in between each of these foils which is okay we don't want it to be too much of a gap in between each of these foils so probably about that much hair that's a good way of doing it as well. You can work backwards from that point. You can say to yourself, okay, I put one just here like that. And then I'll put one just there like that. And that way we can kind of figure out before we get ahead of ourselves and end up with two falls that are completely back to back. So just figure it out before you get there. And then that makes your life a lot easier and you know where you're going. And then you can just carry on with your technique as you were previously. So just quickly show, we've got the last foil in there. We've got that little slither of hair in between where the parting area is roughly. Um, and that'll mean that whatever happens, wherever Carol takes her parting, because it gets, they get closer and closer together as you travel up in that kind of inch either side of the parting, wherever Carol puts her parting, she'll see plenty of blonde. So I'll just show you when we do horizontal sections, obviously when the hair goes back, you can see that it looks kind of stripy, but when the hair, let's say goes in either up or downwards directions, it doesn't look stripy. So it's now about just doing a little bit of tapping at the root just so that we diffuse it when it goes back. We don't need to do any more tapping than just like the hairline at the point at which the hair is going to be traveling back. We're just gonna soften out anything that when Carol ties her hair up, she goes running or something, we're just gonna to help to blend that out a little bit. If we take a section through this parting area, it's quite soft. So a very, very simple process. We're gonna do it at the backwash for a change. I know that I don't, always do the backwash but sometimes I'm actually doing clients I quite often do it at the backwash just for speed and um, there's nothing wrong with doing it at the backwash so we're just going to take a little dab of colour place it on that right on that root area and then just work our way back from the hairline we're not going to come back more than kind of a couple of inches there's kind of no need to come back too far we don't need to do anything other than just tap it out a little bit. We're just using a level eight as well. Um, Cause we don't want to get rid of the lightness towards the root, but we do want to soften it a bit. And then we're just going to come up to this area around the front. And then we just work our way around the opposite side. And then I'm going to apply toner to all the rest, but we've used the slices to get maximum color into the hair in minimum amount of effort. So it's all processed and I just wanted to show you the difference and that, how that root tap just softens and makes everything just seem a little bit more succinct there. It's not got that stripy hard, but it's still blonde. 
So that's the difference between root tapping and not root tapping. And this is the finished result. It's got beautiful dimension going through it. It's got a beautiful soft blonde running through there. The toner that we used on here was an AV, an ash violet toner on a level 10 through the rest of that hair after we did the root tap and it's come up beautiful and clean, but it's not overly ashy, which I really, really like about it. And you can see at the root area, we've got those highlights coming from the root area. They're not super hard. They have a beautiful softness about them and it really boosts the blonde within the hair and it connects that previous kind of more demarcated line. It wasn't heavy in a demarcation, but obviously there was a disparity between the um, previous color application and the new regrowth that Carol had in her hair. And um, I just love this result. You know, it is one of those colors that I think for me epitomizes the word highlight. There are strands of hair within Carol's hair that are distinctly highlighted which creates separation contrast and movement within carol's hair and i really really love the fact that we did the tap around the front here and you can see it again when it's dry even though we use slices to get maximum coverage through these side panels by just going in tapping out that front hairline taking it back about an inch from the hairline it has made a beautiful blend between those ultimately stripy lines that we create that we call highlights and um, really really soften them down and if you don't do this to your clients yet well i highly recommend you give it a try if you've enjoyed this please hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you're new here new videos each and every week 